What's going on YouTube Culture Dog Sam Hatch back here with some more laser discs. These are the updates that I have been uh, you know waiting to get out there for quite some time. This particular update is a, a leftover from July. This was supposed to be part two of my update which had all the Japanese discs that came in from Good Squid at the time. And uh, it just didn't happen because of the circumstances uh, laid out in episode one of this new batch. So you can yeah, go back and revisit that if you want a brief kind of overview of the saga of this room. Uh, anyways, I forgot there was one other box set too that I got from uh, Ryan Cushing. So uh, I'm going to do a more in-depth review of that. But if I could, I'll actually show that in this set as well. These are all Japanese imported boxes. And uh, yeah, that one I'm talking about is the beefy uh, Star Wars collector's set. And um, this is one of a number of Japanese Star Wars sets, and this is still the pre-special edition versions. This box came out in 1995, so uh, after a couple of years after the definitive collection, it does have a gold obi that is wrapped around the cover. You can see it just kind of is uh, form-fitted on the inside there. Of course, you get a lot of rub wear from the uh, from the discs themselves. And yeah, it goes around on both sides. This is a THX box. It's in CLV and uh, has a little bonus disc on it, which is pretty nice. So it's not just Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. You get a little making a bonus. It also features LDG or LD graphics where you can, it doesn't take away all of these Japanese discs have, if they're for American films or British films, etc. They have English dialogue, but Japanese subtitles layered over um, on the uh, the image. And if it's a widescreen film, yeah, if it's wide enough like a scope film, sometimes that's all in the black bars. Sometimes it intrudes on the image a little bit, especially with 1.85 to one films. But um I don't know. It bothers some people, and some people, once you kind of don't think about it, you don't really notice it anymore. But uh, yeah, so these are widescreen letterbox, you know, 2.35 to 1 films with LD graphics. So that with LD graphics, you can uh, only some players have them. Uh, there's a Denon here in the States that's a Panasonic rebrand that has it, and uh, not too many others. Most of, most of them are all only Japanese marketed players only. Uh, but you can use that to overlay other uh, subtitles over the, the built-in Japanese subtitles that are burned into the image. So it won't take them away, as some people thought uh, when, it, when they first started talking about it. But yeah, it does offer some other options in case you want to throw, I don't know, Spanish subtitles on there or something. I'm not even sure which uh, which ones they offer. Um, but yeah, so it's a nice box. And uh, there's the backside. As I mentioned before, it does have uh, Star Wars Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and it's got a From Star Wars to Jedi, the making of a saga, little bonus disc there. And uh, yeah, CBS Fox uh, dropped this sucker, like I mentioned in 1995. It has digital audio and all that good stuff. I'll show you the disc quick, and then yeah, we'll do a deeper dive on this at some point. Uh, they're uh, all gate folds as well. There's Star Wars side and uh, these also have uh, an interview with um, George Lucas at the end of uh, side three chapter 39 on this one nice gatefold bam so yeah these are you know containing the uh, I'm assuming it's the same um, interview from the faces discs Empire Gatefold, very similar to the, the Faces release as well. And uh, there's Jedi. And Sweet Gatefold. And, oh, I forgot, they're not all gatefolds, because from Star Wars to Jedi is, of course, just a single disc. So you got George there with his menagerie. Nice release. This is in mono, 65 minutes. So, yeah, relatively beefy. 
and uh, written and produced by Richard Schickel. We were just talking about him, how he wrote the uh, Happy Anniversary 007 special. So yeah, I'll put these guys back in here. No collectible foam insert, sadly. But, uh, yeah, because they just, you know, they just barely fit in there. There wouldn't be any room for a collectible foam insert. It's a pretty hefty box for a, you know, CLV kind of smaller alternative to the uh, definitive collection. So there you go, the collector's set. I'll be uh, reporting back on these with you know, picture quality and all that sort of stuff and how it stacks up to the uh, previous releases and yeah, latter releases as well. And uh, we'll talk about the, the jacket art, which I, yeah, I've, I've made some comments on before, but uh, I'll, I'll leave that for the future. Uh, up next is something I was very psyched about and um, I foolishly talked myself out of getting it for a while because it's a box set of a television show that I was a big fan of in the 90s. And um, there was supposed to be a sequel box to this. And I don't know, it doesn't appear that it ever came out in Japan, uh, even though it was heavily marketed. And um, yeah, so I figured, well, why get involved in an incomplete set? But I, don't know, I just had to get American Gothic. Uh, I have the DVD set. It's uh, it, you know, it's a, a troubled show. It wasn't always treated well. It was aired out of order. Even the DVD, you have to get a list from you know Wikipedia or something that shows you the correct order of storyline. You know, from show to show. It is fairly episodic, but there is a, a little bit of a you know a running theme throughout it, uh, like an overarching uh, story. It's got a top top ob there yeah for some reason they called this fear one not quite sure what that's all about but it's fear one but cool uh blood splatter artifacts there and uh yeah it's just got a uh you know this cracked earth texture in blue with a kind of gold gold foil uh american gothic logo on there it's pretty nice and that whole kind of texture wraps around it says fear one on the top as well it's uh yeah and then of course it's in uh it's mirrored on the back which is pretty funky but yeah nice uh nice box a lot of discs um let's get this sucker open this i love the insert on this thing is uh you probably can't really see it well but like one of these you know blood spatters just kind of pop but the um the whole thing is is kind of like a textured almost like a leathery kind of wrinkled texture to the paper. Very, very nice presentation. And uh, oh yeah, Gona Guy was involved. Special thanks to Gona Guy. Yeah. Uh, so on the back side, yeah, just way gorgeous. And of course there was no no American release of this on, on LD, but uh, you got a little, uh, little questionnaire postcard you can fill out and uh, looks like an interview. This was uh, a Sean Cassidy show. Uh, Sean Cassidy was developing a lot of TV projects at the time, especially uh, like Heath Ledger's Roar and this. And, um, you know, Sam Raimi was involved in production wise. Um, so, yeah, it's got the um, English cast and titles on the inside. But it's got an interview with, um, well, it looks like a Sean Cassidy and uh, Sam Raimi interview on here as well. Some more Japanese story breakdowns. And uh, I was hoping they would do these two, like the kind of cast relationship tree. <laughs> that was great. Twin Peaks was big on that too, like how everybody connects to each other, either by relation or um, just for circumstances. Um, Gorgeous stuff. I wish Fear Box 2 had been released, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, the um, discs themselves are all gorgeous as well. There is, what, how many of these suckers? Six of them. And collectible foam insert, everybody's favorite. Uh, great stuff. Here, let's, uh, let's yeah, you got um, Lucas Black as Caleb on the front there. And uh, Gary Cole, Sheriff Buck, he was just, yeah, he's basically the devil incarnate in uh, an evil small town sheriff form. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, Dr. Matt, who's, you know, 
the uh, kindly uh, character that's the antithesis to Sheriff Buck. And, uh, oh yeah, that's, uh, it's gotta be Paige. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, uh, Caleb's uh, sister, who is uh, Sarah Paulson's character, who is kind of speaking to him from another plane of existence. There we go. Episode 7 again. That must be Brenda Backey's character. Yep. She's like the, the town siren slash strumpet. And uh, more Caleb. Yeah, and that's his cousin, I do believe. That comes to town after hearing about the events of the first episode. Episode 11 and 12. And yeah, there were a few more, so there would have been a nice opportunity for a second box set. But it is, as far as I know, vaporware. Um, though, one cool thing is that uh, I got these from Kevin Kobos, and he likes to send little inserts and uh, mini posters and things like that. And he actually had a promotional piece for when this box set came out. And, uh, yeah, proudly proclaimed on the box, this has got a 922 release from, what, 1996 for Fear 1. But on the back, it even has uh, Fear 2 is supposed to come out in uh, December of 97. It even has, like, a date on there and everything. So, interesting. It wasn't even that late in the game. I just wonder if this just didn't sell anything at all. Um, I wish wish there was a copy out there. If there is and you know about it, let me know. <laughs> Because I would like to, I would like to have the whole series on LD. All right, this is something I should have bought back in the '90s. I mean, I even had this in my hand at Tower Records on uh, Mass Ave and Newberry Street in in Boston, and I think they wanted about a hundred bucks for it. Uh, this was released that um, you know people would uh, kind of rake fans over the coals for sometimes back in the day. Because if you imported it, you could definitely resell this at a convention or something for a decent price because at the time we hadn't had a, a widescreen issue here in the states of david lynch's dune and uh you know in retrospect it's it's kind of you know it's just like a monochromatic tiny logo on the cover so it's you know it's essentially uh, kind of cheesy but um but it still it has enough visual style to it um yeah it's just got just a little dune square on there and uh it's got a wraparound obi that goes all the way around, though. It's it's super gold, and it does like to yeah, gather uh, fingerprints. Uh, but it's a widescreen set, which is pretty cool. And uh, this, uh, yeah, Comstock release is, is amazing. Uh, still a nice box. It's got the alternate version of the film, the Alan Smithy Judith Booth, Judas Booth um, television version, which is you know, kind of cobbled together, but still interesting. And kind of fun in terms of seeing extra footage and some of the you know, the special effects, of course, aren't finished. The Fremen will show up without their blue eyes and things like that. And it has a super talky um, you know, introduction, which goes on forever. But, you know, it's, it's pretty good at explaining some things to, uh, to people coming at the film for the first time. When I saw this in the theaters in 1984, they actually gave us a glossary on the way into the theaters to help explain it all and uh, same when it came out on uh, video they would have the glossaries on the counters at the rental shops um, love the artwork I've seen this uh, art on a few other I've got a British DVD set that has that as well um, but yeah so 137 minutes digital audio matrix uh, surrounding coded action uh, three sides yeah great stuff it's not the you know the best picture quality but again there was no alternative for getting a letterboxed copy a pretty grainy uh, gatefold picture, which is kind of a bummer, but yeah, can't complain. You're getting Dune letterboxed. Uh, just kind of bright orange uh, label on the discs themselves. And I'm just gonna put that that guy there. Collectible foam insert. You need that. Does have a collectible booklet again very minimalist with uh, Alia there just having a good time and uh, it's got some uh, poster art on the back tons of character information on the inside let's see what else we got 
and uh, track listings, very, very in-depth uh, information about in each individual track, chapter, and a uh, pretty cool uh, you know, credits page in the back. Reminds me of something you'd get at a, uh, at a movie theater back in the day, like an old program guide. And uh, yeah, so it talks about uh, the different discs. And then, of course, the yeah, the television version is split into two, but they didn't do a gatefold, interestingly. They're just two separate single discs. And uh, there's part one with Paul and his mom. And uh, part two with the crew. Where did they go on, uh, go on in the adventure? And uh, these are also featured digital audio. Uh, so this one's 95 minutes, and part two is 94 minutes. Uh, again, you know, you get Japanese subtitles and all that stuff burned into the screen. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was this was the bee's knees back in the day. So super psyched to finally have a copy of that bad boy. And uh, the other one that I had been sleeping on for ages. And I uh, definitely have to do a, a special video on this as well because this is supposed to be a follow-up to a video I dropped about the Back to the Future United States uh, disc. This is the Trilogy box set with, uh, again, wraparound Obi, widescreen, and um, very nice set. This one, oh yeah, I forgot to give you the, the yen. This one was 15,450 yen back in the day. Um, yeah, four discs, seven sides, CLV. It does have a little bonus making of, which is pretty cool. It's still a, a bit of a head scratcher as to why nothing like this ever came out in the States. I love the, it's got this kind of steely purplish kind of look to the cover uh, the, the the box. It's very, very nice. Uh, lots of logo stuff. I mean, I guess it's pretty simplistic in terms of it's just a logo on there, but uh, still it's it's uh, it's nice, especially with the, uh, the silver OB popping off of it. But yeah, it's got part one, two, three, and the secrets of the Back to the Future trilogy as a uh, bonus disc there. Um, I'll take this out. These uh, have, uh, very uh, very striking art on the the jackets. Like the um, the colors are, are very very vibrant. You know, it's a little grainy and uh, you know, low resolution in some places. But yeah, it's just really really nice. So yeah, these um, these came in out in 1993, and these also have LDG LD graphics if you want to change the uh, the subtitles or overlay over the uh, burned in ones. There you go, part two. Yeah, really nice stuff. And part three, interestingly, is two discs, uh, though not a gatefold because they cheaped out those bastards. Um, in the states, but they uh, squeezed it all onto one disc. It's 119 minutes, so just eh, just squeaked by. But they squeezed it onto one disc for the Japanese release. There you go. And um, collectible foam insert. You need that. And the uh, secrets of the Back to the Future trilogy disc, which uh, was a nice little uh, add in there. This is uh, 21 minutes, so not that in-depth or anything like that. A uh, 1990 production. And uh, it does come with a, uh, again, a little postcard. So you could answer all the questions and sell your firstborn. And the LDG description. I got these in a lot of my James Bond discs, too. Kind of explains the process of how the LD graphics overlay works. So, and it does have a very nice booklet. Uh, pretty s simple, but good stuff. It's got um, yeah information about each disc and uh, chapter breaks, which is nice because the um, the American one I have uh, for part one doesn't have any chapter breaks. I don't even think the sequels do either. Um, but yeah, a little bit about each film and then a breakdown of the chapters for the the making of and then you get into a back to the future timeline which is very cool uh, and um, then there's the uh, character situation it you know tells you about every character from every film and their different timeline incarnations um, 
And then there's the um, this really cool listing of all the um, Back to the Future motifs, like Butthead or Hello, Hello, Anybody Home, Save the Clock Tower, Pepsi, and stuff. And, and it shows you every in, like kind of uh, instance in which that appears, which side, which chapter it is. And so that's pretty cool. And then there's, yeah, the, the Back to the Future freak chapter listing, which, you know, breaks down all these interesting, iconic moments in, in the film and... Uh, timelines and uh, the songs it's got little uh, little notes next to the songs and tells you the uh, the performer as well which is pretty cool and um, so yeah that's got the freak chapter for all three films and then uh, a freak quiz at the end too which is pretty fun man this is a really fun booklet yeah I enjoyed that a lot everybody should have a copy of that uh, so here you go Back to the Future Trilogy. That's the last of these boxes. I'm going to come back and show the uh, Muse High Vision boxes I got. There's only a handful of them, so that'll be a relatively quick one. And then uh, yeah, we'll take a break for a bit until some more discs come in the mail. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.